Merci d'accueillir pour un keynote. On vient d'en parler, Paula Forteza l'a mentionné à l'instant, Pierre Mancini d'Open Collective. Merci de l'applaudir. Besoin, vous avez tout trouvé Voilà, très bien. Bonjour. D'accord. Ah, bonjour à tous. Je suis super heureuse d'être ici. Malheureusement, mon français, ce n'est pas top. Donc, euh, on va continuer en anglais. Je crois qu'il y a de la traduction. Je suis désolée. Um, today, we're going to talk about sustaining open source for the future. Um, so, let me start by stating the obvious. Open source is not free. Somebody else paid for it. And normally, those who pay for it are the maintainers, the community, those who build open source. They create software that everyone uses, and they, then they are tasked with their maintenance, even beyond their wildest dreams. So open source has a lot of community imbalances. Um, a couple of examples, posting an issue, has zero cost for the person that posts the issue, but can have a huge impact on uh, the maintainer in their time and um, their, their general health. Companies are hooked on open source. This was a huge battle that open source won. Most companies today use open source software. They're not giving back, or at least they're not giving back enough. Um, there are more people today that extract value from open source than, um, than those who are maintaining it. So there's a huge imbalance there. And open source allows us to share the code. Yes, it's fantastic, but it'd be great to also share the responsibility of maintaining that code. Um, so it finally happened again last week. Um, malicious code was injected in an NPM package, in an NPM module, affecting over 2 million applications. The malware was designed to steal Bitcoin. Um, this is from the... Dominic. Dominic was the person who uh, was um, tasked with maintaining that module. He created it. He, Dominic today maintains over 700 modules. Um, this was just one of them. He didn't use it anymore, and he didn't get anything out of maintaining that module. A module is like a piece of digital property, a right that can be transferred, but you don't get any benefit from owning it. It's, you can sell it, you can sell it, you can rent it, um, you can't do any of those things, but you still maintain the responsibility of maintaining that uh, module. All right, so what do we need? We obviously need open source to be sustainable. Like anything, open source as a community, open source software needs to be sustainable. And those imbalances that I mentioned just before, we need to find ways of making them whole again. Sustainability, so I, um, I co-founded a company called Open Collective, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but also a project called Sustain OSS, Sustain Open Source. It's um, a one-day conversation about open source sustainability. It's a beautiful community of people who are thinking about what it means to sustain open source. Um, and the way we are thinking about it, and this is obviously an ongoing conversation, but sustainability refers to the resilience, and by resilience we understand the ability to uh, withstand change in resources in the community. So sustainability refers to the resilience and the thriving of projects, the, <clears throat> the communities, and the individuals around them. Right? So open source sustainability doesn't refer only to money or having funding for open source. That's a huge part of it, and we're going to talk about it now. But it also re uh, refers to the communities and the individuals. So it's about financial sustainability, it's about um, sustainability of its people, of the community, and the individuals behind the open source projects. Unless we understand sustainability like in this framework, we are, I don't think we're going to move uh, the ecosystem forward to where it has to be and kind of make up for these imbalances that we're seeing today. All right, so we need funding, yes. 
right? We need funding, like anything, open source, has never, open source needs money to be sustained. Um, this is a, um, a tweet in the middle of this NPM module um, drama last week um, that from um, Swift on security and accounting Twitter that is very active and this person, he or she, um, was talking about um, how companies are think thinking about um, giving money to open source. So one of, the, one of the first ways and one of the main ways that open source has of receiving funding is through um, support contracts. So um, corporate f purchasing and policies are really, really complicated, but nothing is gonna change until you make them pay you. Someone filed a bug, support contract. Someone wants a feature, great, support contract. It's literally easier for companies to purchase support contracts than it is to give like $25 here or there, right? Um, and it's not, and, and we're seeing it. This is Open Collective, this is Bubbles um, support tiers. These are the companies that are funding one of the projects on our platform, Bubble. Um, Trivago, Airbnb, Facebook Open Source, AMP from Microsoft, Adobe, Coinbase, Webflow. They're all super willing and they're doing it. They're getting support contracts, they're purchasing, they're um, not only giving donations, but also having uh, subscriptions to open source software that they use. <clears throat> and um, they are not only giving back by using their employees' time to support open source, but also through literally giving funding to those communities. But we also need open industry standards. Yes, support is great. Supporting your project with a support um, um, subscription is great. But we can go very, very quickly from like someone opening an issue, the maintainer being able to say, like, look, I don't work for you. Like, I'm doing this in my free time. I'm volunteering here, so I'm just not going to answer. Or you can fix it yourself. And if you don't like it, just fork it. From going from that to, hey, I paid $5, now you need to reply, right? Well, the only thing that that's gonna make is gonna add pressure on the maintainers and increase the level of huge burnout that we're seeing in the ecosystem. So we need open industry standards. We need to have um, an agreement of what expectations both companies and maintainers should have from support contracts, how to um, structure them, um, and how um, making it you know, very easy without all the legal red tape. So open industry standards, uh, standards for support. And it's not just support. Corporate incentives to give funding to open source are, are varied. They, a lot of them want a name in the community. Microsoft was here before. I don't know if they're still here, but Microsoft is investing a lot in making up for their you know, past relationship with open source and building up their name in the community. And they're making a lot of progress. Open source is give, give, take. We all know that. If you don't give, like, you're not gonna be able to take as much. Corporate incentives, strategic influence on the roadmap. This is the Webpack, Webpack case, for example. Webpack has um, a voting system where supporters, both companies and individuals, can vote on their roadmap um, and define next milestones. Another incentive for companies to support open source, the health of their stack. Like if you're gonna build your company using open source software, you wanna make sure that that software is maintained. So you have two ways. You either put engineering resources yourself to maintain it, or you give, fund, you, you give funding to that project to ensure that it's maintained, securities are patched, et cetera. And then hiring and retention. And this is, like, this is huge. We've seen in Trivago, for example, a European company, they, are, they, they started supporting web, uh, Webpack and Bubble big time, and they're getting re, um, engineers that apply jobs to jobs in uh, Trivago saying, we are applying to here because of your support of open source. Like it's increasing their ability to hire. And in a highly competitive ecosystem, like the open source ecosystem, being able to have that um, edge in hiring reta and retaining your employees, it's massive. 
All right. But we also need infrastructure. Like, don't forget that open source projects are like a group of people doing something together. They're not a company. They're not a nonprofit. They're not a legal entity. They're just folks hacking together. Just going back to Swift on security, um, just bear with me here because this a couple of tweets are great. You have no freaking idea the nightmare it is to convince a purchasing department to use a credit card in PayPal after checking out a, a multi-stage online card. You're going to be poor forever. Or my favorite, enrolling a new vendor is more than difficult. It's demoralizing. It eats your soul. If you make it easy, you're God. I don't know if anyone here ever enrolled a company as a vendor in, say, Google or Microsoft or any other company, you want to die. I do it for the open source project on a regular basis to support. We support over 900 open source projects, and it kills me every single time. So pretending that open source projects do this, it's insane. Not only because they, they don't know how to do it. It's, they don't have the time. They don't have the experience. They don't have the infrastructure. Corporations speak corporations. They don't speak anything else. It's really, really tough for companies to support individuals. And I bet we all, like many of us here, or a lot of people in the community, go through the same thing. All right, we want to receive money. How do we do it? OK, we open a PayPal account. OK, go try and convince Microsoft to give you money to your PayPal. It's going to be great. Um, OK, let's open a nonprofit. OK, great, where? Well, I'm in Germany. No, I'm in Nebraska. I'm in Bangalore. Fantastic. This is going great, right? It's really difficult for distributed communities, decentralized groups of people that share something in common to have a legal entity. And without a legal entity, you just cannot receive corporate funding. It's not going to happen. And it's crazy to expect that every single open source project should have their own legal entity. It's like having a server per blog, right? We are all setting up the same boring, repetitive tasks, talking to lawyers and accountants. I mean, I don't have anything against lawyers and accountants, but it's really hard to argue that that's where we should put the focus. So at the end of the day, we are circles <clears throat> in a world made for triangles. We are circles in a, in a world made for triangles, right? In a, in a, we are, the open source projects suffer specially from this. We are distributed groups, decentralized, unincorporated groups of people. We are communities, right? And we are forced to live in a world that only understands corporations, whether for profit or nonprofit. But we, our economic system is organized for corporations that interact in, um, that compete in a scarcity-driven economy. But in open source, we are all about gifting. We're all about sharing. We, we, it's not a zero-sum game, right? We build on what others have built before, and then we pay it forward. And so there's this situation where we are completely out of sync with our, with our institutions. We, our economic system understands corporations or understands the individual, but they don't understand the community, a community that requires funding, but they're not a corporation, they're not a nonprofit, they're not a legal entity, and they don't want to be, and I can't blame you us for not wanting to be that. All right, so what do we do? There's a couple of ideas. Some things worked in the past, and some things I think are going to work in the future. Corporate models like Red Hat, Open Core, um, the Linux Foundation, they get software, they sell services on top of, of that software, and that's how they support open source. Um, use crypto to completely avoid the legacy system. This has a lot of benefits in the sense that you don't need any, virtually any structure to operate, but it has um, a couple of problems, mostly related to volatility and um, the general kind of user friendliness of the ecosystem. Open source as a public utility, we can support open source with taxes. The problem with this is localization. Where, who, which government? You know, open source, it's everywhere. And our own favorite, and what I do with Open Collective, decentralized community shaped sustainability model. Open Collective is a community of people that have a shared mission and that operates in full transparency. 
and it's a new social and economic unit. We need a new social and economic unit that is going to be able to give open source economic power. Right? It's the ones that we have, they just don't fit. Um, and so we need to design new social and economic units. We need to give open source a minimal organizational structure and a financial mechanism to be able to operate. This is Evan, he's the main author of View. They started a collective a while ago. Um, and says open collective transparent expense model could, could help us scale the financial contributions beyond a single developer. And this is key, right? Because most of the funding models that we are seeing are either corporate structures or individual maintainers getting paid, which is fantastic. But we want to support the communities. And the reason why we want to support the community as a whole is because we want to free the maintainer. We need a loose organizational structure that is going to allow people to come in and out, contribute more or less at one point, and, and move away from the situation where we, that we're at at the moment, where very few people have the task of supporting um, modules or software that are used by millions of applications, and they're not receiving anything in exchange. Right? If someone wants to release open source code in the world, and then they want to move on, we need to build um, or provide the organizational structure that is going to enable them to do that. An open collective does that. Because otherwise, having to, the, the other alternative of building a corporation is like having a hierarchical organization that is top down and that has a president. And asking who's a president of an open source project is like asking who's the president of the internet. It just doesn't work. It's not who we are, it's not how we operate. The other thing that allows, Open Collective allows for is to support your dependencies automatically. We're starting this, um, we're gonna be releasing this soon, but the idea is that every time you purchase a support um, subscription to an open source project or you, you give them a donation, a percentage of that is gonna go to support their dependencies automatically. So we have a lot of, of work to do in terms of how we're gonna distribute this, yes. Um, I think that this is something that the community um, has to come up with, how we assign value to the different um, dependencies. But the idea is that we are gonna be able to kind of trickle down um, the long um, dependency tree and support most of the dependencies. Once you have funding, invest in your community. Also know us, no people, no code. If you do not support your community, you're not going to have a sustainable open source project. What you can do, you can um, give contributors a voice on your roadmap, invite them to vote, to have an impact in the decisions that the, um, the strategy of where the, the software is going. Reach out to people with different skill sets. Coding is not the only skill that an open source project needs. We need people who write documentation, so we need technical writers. We need um, people who are able to tri triage is issues, to organize, pay for the tasks that no one wants to do. There are a bunch of boring tasks in maintaining an open source project that no one wants to do, and it makes sense. Support, closing issues, millions. We can use funding to support those tasks. And again, free the maintainers. And invest in face-to-face -face opportunities. If you have funding for your open source project, send use it to organize a sprint, fly people to conferences to speak about your open source project. Invest in your community, not just on your code. This is one of the, this is GitHub's uh, last year's um, open source survey. The first three examples of problems in open source, incomplete or confusing documentation, unresponsive, unresponsiveness, and dismissive responses. It's very hard to scale, maintain an open source project if you have a closed community. So you're gonna need to invest in onboarding people with different skill sets. You're gonna need to invest time in responding and, and replying people, help them with their first pull request. That demands a lot of time. And so funding for this is um, very, very important. We need to come up with a model to distribute revenue responsibilities and earn social capital that takes into account different roles and supports different skill sets. This is the goal. This is what we need to do. Because I believe that you never change 
existing reality by fighting it. You need to build a new model that renders the existing one obsolete. This is what we need to do with open source sustainability. Thank you.